I welcome you to yourself, which is the theme of our month, uh, this month, which is your journey to you. And we've come to an understanding uh, uh, this, this, this month uh, that this journey is one, an adventure, that's an adventure of self, not only self-discovery, but self-actualization, where we're doing our spiritual work play so well that we become actualized, that the great presence, the great power, the great love gets to know itself as our very life and being. You've heard me say that we use the word unfoldment on purpose because unfoldment denotes the truth that there's already a perfect pattern, there's already a perfect idea that we did not create ourselves, nor do we create that idea, nor are we trying to recreate ourselves. We are simply becoming aware of ourselves and allowing that divine idea to unfold, to come from the realm of invisibility into the realm of visibility, the same way that a seed may carry a rose bush, it may carry an avocado tree, and that rose bush and avocado tree may be invisible, but, but indivisible within the seed, it unfolds to reveal its visibility as rose bushes and avocado trees and apple trees, etc., etc., etc. So we use the word unfolding on purpose. And we become keenly aware in this teaching, which eliminates us from the victimhood consciousness, that we have the power to create the condition for our own unfoldment. Uh, we have used the word endogenous, meaning we create our environment from within. Individuals that are prone to holding on to their victim consciousness will say, I can't succeed, I can't be happy, I can't be prosperous, because the conditions aren't right, because those people don't like me, because they, 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 they are talking about me. We don't live there. We create our own environment from within ourselves through our spiritual practices of affirmative prayer and sacred meditation and life visioning and fellowship and study so that we create an environment inside of ourself a ripe condition for the perfect idea that we are to unfold regardless of external circumstances, regardless of they, whoever they are, regardless of situations. So we throw off the shackles of victimhood and step into the awareness that all of the power and all of the presence and all of the love and intelligence there is, is within us right now. So today, we are proclaiming that humanity has learned all that it needs to learn through fear, and now it is to learn through faith and love, through fear, which is a low energy field, through fear, which creates a sense of a separation, through, through fear, individuals have locked themselves into their limited self, which has created an appearance world of haves and have-nots, created an appearance world of lack and limitation and the scarcity, and basically activating merely survival skills of coping, defensive mechanisms, and, and compulsive behaviors. Humanity has learned enough through fear. Today, we're stepping up in the spiritual community and saying in substance, we now want to learn through faith. We want to learn through love. When we begin to move into a faith and a fiery conviction, we tap into our limitless self, which allows us to open up to the great mystery of life that allows life itself to move us beyond the imaginal realm that life becomes conscious of itself as our very life and being. Faith is a high energy field. Fear moves in one direction and faith moves, faith, I would say faith, love, moves in another direction. And so what do we do? Basically, you want to dissect your fear. You know, there's the shadow, there's the gift, and there's the genius. That's how that operates. There's your shadow self uh, that's locked in trauma and drama and fear and doubt and worry. And it operates two ways, uh, through reaction or repression. 
When it's in reaction, you get angry, you get triggered, you get mad. When it's repression, you hide it. And so when you're in that fear, when you, when you, you, when you, you, when you dissect your fear, that is, you don't, you don't just react to it all the time, and you don't repress it, you actually dive into it. You embrace it. And when you embrace the fear and dissect it, you know what you're going to bump into? You're going to bump into a lie. And that lie is a lie of separation. It's a lie of lack. It's a lie of loss. It's a lie of fear of death. It's all kinds of lies wrapped up in that fear. You don't, you don't react to it, and you don't repress it. You just embrace it. What am I afraid of? Just look at it. What am I afraid of? What am I afraid of? And if you look deep enough with deep sincerity, you'll see there's a lie acting as a law in your life that's making you react or it's making you repress. But as you keep embracing it, that shadow becomes a gift. That lie gets transformed and you become gifted. The dark transmutes itself into an activation of something that's latent within you, ready to burst forward, but you've been, rea been reacting and repressing that you're not allowing to give birth, you see? You're not allowing the gestation to take place. You're not embracing the sacred darkness. You are reacting and repressing. Let it come out. What are you afraid of? What is the lie? What are you afraid of? What is the lie? And then with sheer embracing and prayer, and meditation, not bypassing, prayer and meditation, embracing, what am I afraid of? You will discover you have a gift that's been in embryonic state waiting to come forward. And as you begin to embrace this gift, not something that you've created, but something that is the presence of God that's becoming conscious of itself as your very life, that gift would ultimately become your genius. Everyone is a genius in some level of their life. Every single being. We're all original ideas in the presence and the power and the love of God. We're not carbon copies of anyone or anything. Even though when individuals are unconscious, they become carbon copies of their parents, carbon copies of, their, of whatever, whoever they grew up with and things of that particular nature. But you are an original idea. Remember the Zen Cohen, the, you know, show me the face you had before your parents were born, that you are an original idea even before your parents were even born. So when you begin to examine the fear, we've learned enough through it. Humanity is on the verge of learning through faith and conviction, through love. And what happens there? L faith and love, that's a higher energy field. And what happens is when you're operating from that consciousness, from, let me put it this way. When you're in the limited self, you only visualize through what has been known already. But when you start to tap into the limitless self, you start to catch from the realm of that which is not known by your limited self. It's the mystery of more good trying to come through you that no one has ever experienced before. It's unprecedented good. And individuals are afraid to live at that level because they're in fear and survival. We want to go to the unknown. When we live in faith, when we live in love, when we live in conviction, the limitless self, the original self, will begin to open up. And there's a mystery of life taking over our life. We begin to live from an unprecedented vibration and frequency. As I said earlier, life becomes an adventure. It's not the humdrum same thing every day in our meditation, in our prayer. We're opening ourselves up to great possibilities that haven't existed before, you see. And I, I was, when I was, in, I was uh, in meditation on Monday, um, excuse me, on Friday morning, and all of a sudden, this vivid memory came through my awareness. And it might have something to do with the fact that we're in our anniversary of 36 years. I don't, I don't know what triggered the memory. But all of a sudden, I remembered when we were at 5700 Buckingham, and there was a big flood in the sanctuary. And it ruined the Alice's Quiet Mind bookstore. It flooded the sanctuary. And revenue was, not, was lost quote unquote, lost from the lack of sales and we couldn't meet. It was all kinds of things happening. And we ultimately we had to move out of there and, and raise money to move. And, and, and the naysayers were saying things like, uh, you know, Agape's had a good run, but it's over now. 
You know, it was, all of this was going on, but we had a visionary board of trustees. We had a, a visionary staff. We had visionary practitioners that did not lean into fear. We leaned into faith. We leaned into a great a dynamic of love. And today, we're serving more people than we ever served at 5700 Buckingham. We're in all the continents in 90 countries. We, you know, and, and it could have been easy to lean into fear. I'm not saying fear didn't come up. It just didn't lead. It didn't guide. We didn't respond. We didn't react to it. We didn't repress it, and we didn't react to it. There was a, there was a, a vision that was captured, and we were looking for buildings, and we were going around and all that stuff, and then, bam, the idea emerged to be here at the place we were in now, and the service has exponentially grown, but I can re that memory just passed my awareness, you see. And so during this particular period of time when we generally celebrate our anniversary, I want you to know a couple of things. I want you to know, one, yes, we love Agape. We love the Agape International Spiritual Center. We want it to be a strong and vibrant community. We want everything uh, uh, necessary. We want the idea to clothe itself as everything necessary uh, to continue to do the work we're doing. But we don't stop there. That's not the thing. The thing is that Agape is a birthing field. It's a healing field and a birthing field for individuals to awaken and when awakened uh, people awaken, then we have the world we want to live in. We are a birthing field. We have individuals like Joanne Coleman and, and Julie Moret and, and Kathy Mack and Joan Seven and Deborah Johnson and Monique Hudson and, and Lee Brown and Karen Mills Austin and, and, and Victoria Thomas and, 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 and Keith Horwitz and, and, and so many other practitioners. Uh, that have emerged from the field. In other words, we're here to birth individuals that are awake, you see. So it's not just, oh, we're agape, and we want to support agape. No, agape is here to birth individuals. And when we birth individuals, we become the tip of the spear of an emerging world that you can only see through faith. You can only see through conviction. You can only see through awakened consciousness. You can only see through love. And so, though you'll hear us saying, it's the time to raise funds for agape, we don't stop there. We are individuals that go beyond the walls of the manifest agape. Agape is here to birth individuals, to awaken, you see. And we think about, I think about the individuals that I get to meet all around the United States and around the globe who are waking up. Just yesterday, uh, me and my family went hiking in the morning. We went to a restaurant, and a lady comes running out. I thought that was Michael walking down the street. I said, yes. And she said, oh, I'm just here from the, uh, uh, the U.K., I live in the UK. I follow you on Instagram. You helped me awake. You changed my life. And then her friend jumped in. Oh, yeah, me too. Can we come to Agape tomorrow? Let's come into the 11 o'clock service. And we're talking in the bookstore. Then another lady says, oh, can I come? And I said, are you with them? She said, no. She says, but I used to go to Agape when it was at 5700. I haven't made it to the new building. I said, well, well come on down. It's just 20 minutes down the street, straight down Los Angeles. And then she would talk and we're talking and we're talking. And then she stopped. She says, it's you. What? It's you. I'm talking to Michael Blackwell. I said, yeah. She said, oh, my God. And she started stuttering, getting all nervous. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Keep talking the way you were talking before you knew it was me. <laughs> you, know, you know? But anyway, I get the chance to wet, meet people who are waking up. Now, here's the deal. We want to be the tipping point that allows for the world as it appears to be, lack, limitation, scarcity, haves, haves, nots, uh, separation, hate, racism, homophobia, all of that that's emerging from a sense of separation, we want to be on the tip of the spear and the tipping point of the emergence of a world that works for the highest and best within us all. And so we're saying in substance, we've learned enough through fear. We've learned enough through fear. Turn off your television. Stop looking at the news. 
Just give it doses of it. So you know a little bit what's happening in the apparent world, but spend more time studying truth. Spend more time in your prayer and meditation. Spend more time in visionary conversations than in going into the world of fear that's going to sell you drugs to alleviate your anxiety. We've learned enough through fear. Now we must learn through faith and love so that we can continue to demonstrate, as the visionary board of trustees did, in the midst of floods, income stopping, in the midst of having to move, everyone stood powerfully in a vision of agape is an idea shot straight from the infinite. It will clothe itself. The word will become flesh. Let us stand still and see the salvation until it manifests. Now, I want you to do that for your own life. I want you to stop learning from fear. I want you to understand what Yeshua ben Joseph meant. Fear not, little flock. It's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's God's pleasure, joy to give you everything. But fear is a lower energy field. It moves you in a different direction and creates different conditions. Faith, even though you can't see it with your eyes yet, but the feeling of faith, the feeling of victory, the feeling of love is a high energy field that creates different conditions. The average person wants to see something first in the physical in order for them to be happy, in order for them to have faith. It doesn't work like that. You have to feel it and see it internally. Then you'll see it externally. So right now as I'm speaking to you in this particular moment, turn your attention away from the facts of life. You got a physical condition? Money issue? physical body issue, whatever it is. Turn your attention away from that for a moment and come back to the beginning of this talk that we are a perfect spiritual idea, not a body. Perfect spiritual idea, not a mind. Mind is a set of programs. We have a mind, we have a body. We are a perfect spiritual idea. Luminosity. And allow for your attention to be so focused that you'll understand what it means when it says, if the eye is single, the body shall be full of light. When this place between your eyebrows is singly focused on a high vision of infinite possibility, your body will be full of light and luminosity and celestial good. Stand in that awareness. So hear this from the beginning. Hear it, hear it from the beginning. You are on a journey to you. Now, you may have gotten sidetracked. You may have gotten caught up in societal claims that your happiness lies in the perfume that you're wearing or the car you're driving or whatever. You know, you may have gotten sidetracked into being a consumer. If you buy enough stuff, you're going to be happy. You're on a journey to you. And you are an emanation of the Most High. And you have the power to create the condition for you to emerge. Catch that. Now, a tree is, is planted in the right condition. It doesn't have any no in it. Just Okay. You can think independent of a circumstance, so you have... You have choice, you have response, you have reaction. You can actually thwart yourself from unfolding. You can get caught up, as the reading indicated, in the mist, the sense of separation, and go through all kinds of experiences. Nothing wrong with that. I'm saying today that at this time in our human history, we've learned enough through fear. We've, we've learned enough through fear. We've seen wars and rumors of wars and mayhem and killings and all manner of things. We've learned enough through that. You get to create your own condition. You got to be strong, though, because the world of appearances will pull your attention. 
We've learned it. So we have to go into faith. Faith is the, sub, it's the vibrational substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that can't be seen yet, you see. So you have to live in this fiery faith. And then what happens? The world that fear is creating, you become less and less interested in that world. And the world that faith and love is creating, you start to see it. You start to live in it. Even before it manifests. So you're not waiting for a manifestation to be happy. You're celebrating even before manifestation. That quickens the manifestation. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. You celebrate before the manifestation. You are in gratitude before it physically shows up. This is the training of your mind that has been programmed by doubt. It's the retraining of your mind that's been programmed by fear and separation and everything to be worried about. And this is the bonus. When you live in a condition, not fear, in a different condition, you still get the survival stuff. See how my voice went up? That, that was still, you, know, you still get the survival. In other words, you still get intuition. Oh, no, I shouldn't go down that street. Oh, no, I shouldn't buy that. Oh, this salesman's crazy. You'll still get the survival stuff, but you're not living there. You're living in the mystery. And then you'll understand the meaning of, behold, I make all things new. When your frequency is raised, you become new. You become closer to your original self. It's a higher vibration. It's a higher frequency. Behold, I'm new today. I'm new. Say that out loud. I'm new. I'm new. I am new today. Maybe you need to say, I'm willing to be new today. I'm wiping away the past. I am new today. And you begin to see life differently. You begin to see people differently. As I was speaking about in the Awake and Activate class on last Tuesday, I was reminding our, our students that we're moving, and I, and I think I may have mentioned this at Agape, and, the, and the, you know, we're moving from role to soul. That we have all these different roles we play, and these different personalities and subpersonalities, and each role and each personality uses the law according to that particular perception. And I invited this, this, the class, to, we took them through an exercise to drop all your roles. Mother, father, godfather, grandfather, auntie, uncle, male, female, straight, gay, black, white, Asian, Mexican, whatever, all the roles, all, just, just, just come to a place where you let all of that go. Titles, ooh, that's a big one. Titles, and where you went to school, and where you didn't go to school. You let it all go. But you come back to the original. Your real self. And you become an instrument for the presence of God, you see. And then to stop on a regular basis and to notice when you've gotten, when you're in a role, when you're in a title, when you're in a, 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 a something that you've created for yourself. Now here's the deal. The life that you really are, it will shine through those roles. You become a better mother, a better teacher, a better whatever your particular role is, because you're not tightly holding on to the role. You're making yourself available to that which you are before roles and personalities and subpersonalities emerged. And then, your evocation of the law is not hindered by the known based on the roles and what it knows. Remember beginner's mind. In the beginner's mind, there are infinite possibilities, but in the experts, there are few. 
you're coming back to the beginner's mind. And then the spirit of intelligence and love and beauty and power and potency and abundance gets to flow through your roles because you're not so tightly holding on to it, you see. You're not getting your joy because you, th- you want other people to think you're smart or beautiful or pretty. Your joy is intrinsic. Ha! You get to share and shine and give and glow. And in the sharing and shining and giving and glowing and radiating, joy, love, beauty. You're alive. The Spirit of God, you see. Oh, my God. As I said, from the beginning, you're on a journey to you. Journey to you. It's an unfolding of what you already are in the heart mind of the infinite. You get to create the condition vibrationally for your own unfolding. You are endogenous. We've learned enough through fear. We've learned about separation. We've learned about the different frequencies of separation, fear, doubt, worry, hate. We've learned enough. Condition, creates, it creates a condition. It's a, lower, it's a lower energy field. We've learned enough about it. Just imagine for a moment. Just, 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 just humor me for a moment. Just imagine. You turn on your television, and they tell you about all the remissions that happened that day. They tell you about all the truces and the forgivenesses that happened that day. All the people who made amends to other people that day, who apologized. On the television, it says, all the people who became philanthropic and began to give because they had way more than they needed. You began to see people sharing with each other and and people uh, shaking hands across the aisle. And what what if you woke up and on television was all this good stuff? It is happening on the planet, by the way. If that is happening, what I've described, it, it's just not broadcast. You see, your, the programming would be different. But until that happens, we have to take control of our own programming. We've got to program our own mind through fiery faith and conviction. Move in a different condition, you see. And then we birth these wonderful individuals and different practitioners and I don't necessarily mean licensed practitioners different beings that emerge out of this field and are able to hold the frequency all around the globe and on this frequency and this vibrational condition a new world begins to be seen You can call it the beloved community. You can call it the world house. You can call it heaven on earth. You can call it Shangri-La. But I'm telling you, it's here for those who have eyes to see. See it with me. Be the condition for it. God, universe, nature. That's the real meaning of gun. The presence of God birthing a universe, all of nature. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Woo! God is good. Life is good. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So when you think about individuals like Reverend Joan, Reverend Coco, Reverend Deborah, Reverend Kathleen, Reverend Joanne, Reverend Julie, Monique, and Sandy Williams, and Lee and Jennifer, and Jason, and Keith Horwitz, and Victoria Thomas, and great beings there, and 
Colorado and Durango and individuals right here, Karen and so many others. Brother, Brother Jason Benefield rising up as a practitioner, you Reverend Wendy, individuals that are emerging from this field of unity. And you, I, mean, I can't mention everybody. <laughs> Dion Raymond, I can't mention everybody. I um, can't mention everybody. David Silverstein, can't mention everybody. <laughs> Asia Mason, can't mention everybody. <sighs> we rise up, hold the frequency that heaven can be seen. Where? Through us. Return within in this moment. Join with me in prayer like you've never joined me before. Don't let your mind wander. Come into a state of wonder, not wander. Come into a state of awe and wonder. Come with me. Allow yourself to remember any moment in your life where you were supremely grateful, dynamically thankful. I use the word dynamic. Dynamically thankful. What did you say? I'm grateful. Dynamic, thank, dynamically thankful. Come into a state of consciousness where there was such appreciation for life. Oh, it may be in a moment where you were at the beach and you just got lost in the ocean of devotion. You may be in a forest and you were being bathed by the trees. You may have been alone in a desert and you were able to catch a vision because there was nothing distracting your attention. You may have been with a loved one and you were in a, a dynamic hug and an embrace. And in that moment of hugging and embracing, you felt yourself like you've never felt yourself before. Or maybe you were looking into the eyes of a newborn that hadn't been programmed yet, and you felt the innocence, and you felt your own innocence again. Or maybe it was a moment of prayer where you once again pulled yourself away from the turmoil and the worry and the doubt and the fear and you were no longer thinking about what others were thinking about you. You were just considering, oh my God, the universe has caught my back. I'm one with God I love. I just want to love. I just want to love. I just want to be an instrument of love. I leave no one out of my heart. Oh, we stop in this moment in this dynamic field of gratitude. Our perceptual windows are becoming clearer and clearer and clearer, and we're seeing that all of the presence and all the power and all the love that there is is available. It's here. It's now. And we're feeling such a deep sense of connection. I am what thou art. Thou art what I am. No distance whatsoever, no separation, no otherness, no other power. We're not fooled by religiosity. We're captured by a vision of oneness. Our life is the life of God. And it is from this consciousness that I am privileged to speak the word once again for each and every one of us that the dynamic good, the all good that is everywhere, not just the human concept of good, not human morals, this, the all good of God that's everywhere in its fullness, I get to speak the word that that good becomes active in our heart. Our minds become programmed by the light. Every organ and action and function of our body temple becomes lit up from within. Vitality and vigor and wholeness and beauty and health reign supreme. The mental body becomes so clear, the emotional body so pure because we're studying war no more. 
We're studying fear no more other than to dissect it and see the lie. That we may be free. Come. Holy Spirit. I know you're already here. I just say come just to make us receptive. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, great God of the universe. We, we, only, we only want the highest and best. Come, beauty. Come, love. Come, abundance. Come, prosperity. Come, joy. Come, vitality. Come, vigor. Come, health. Come, come, intelligence. Come, spiritual power. It's here we say come to make ourselves receptive to that which is already here. Oh, we give thanks for this. I feel good about it. But as you've heard me say for over 36 years, the feeling, if you live in a feeling universe, responds to the nature of our song, provides the healing. Help them feel it. What if it's true? You had everything you need. What if it's true You could live your wildest dreams Will you run and hide Or go along for the ride Test the current and tide In the ocean of possibilities What if you knew What if you knew What if you knew That the brilliance you're mining is you what if you knew, what if you knew that the infinite's rising in you? What if it's true that there's never need for shame? What if it's true that there's power in your pain? Will you run and hide or go along for the ride? Test the current and tide in the ocean of possibilities. What if you knew? What if you knew? What if you knew that the brilliance you're mining is you? What if you knew? What if you knew that the infinite's thriving in you? What if you knew, 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 what if you knew? Jamie's singing, what if you knew, act like you know, that all of life is wants to express through you right now. The great power, the great presence called by millions of names wants to know itself as your life. 